Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I am going to talk about electric field strength in a radial field. Now, I've said before that electric field strength is the resultant force divided by the charge of the object that's feeling the field. So I've got the resultant force divided by the charge that's actually in the field. Not the charge that's causing the field, the charge that's in the field. And in the case of the radial field, I can work out the resultant force that the object feels by using Coulomb's law. So that is F equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over R squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that formula for force into my equation of electric field strength is force per unit charge. So I'm going to end up whoops, with this here. E equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over R squared over Q. Now, in Coulomb's law, one of these charges is the thing causing the field, and the other charge is the thing that's in the field. And because this is also the charge of the thing that's in the field, what's going to happen is one of these charges is going to cancel. <laughs> I apologise. Which is going to equal 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R squared. And this Q here, this is the thing causing the field. So I could work out the field strength of the object by just literally the thing that's causing the field. And what I'm going to do now is going to show you how you could use it to work out the resultant field that an object is in. So this was a previous question that I've had before. And I worked out using Newton's, um, not Newton's, uh, Coulomb's law, the, for, the resultant force. So the resultant force on this charge in the middle was 1.26 times 10 to the minus 8 um, Newtons in that direction. Which means, if I use my basic field strength formula, I know that E equals force over charge. So 1.26 times 10 to the minus 8 over the charge of this object here, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 9. I get an answer of 6.3 newtons per coulomb. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the formula that we worked showed a minute ago, which was that field strength is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r squared. And I'm going to find out the electric field strength from this object at this point, and the electric field strength from this object at this point. And I'm going to find out the electric, the resultant electric field strength using vectors. So I have labelled the direction of these fields. And this is just a reminder that remember positive charges, the fields, okay, go away from the positive charge. So the field strength at this point would be going from the 3 nanocule, would be going this way. And the field strength in this point would be going this way for the 4 nanocoulombs. Okay? So just be aware of that. So let's actually find out what my field strength from E is. So this is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 3 times 10 to the minus 9 over 1.2 squared. So putting that into my calculator, so that's 8.99 times 10 to the 9 times by 3 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 1.2 squared. And I get an answer of 18.73 newtons per coulomb. If I work this out for the 4, so the same procedure, I get 12.44 newtons per coulomb. And the difference between these, because these are going in different directions, and of course, electric field strength is a vector, so I can look at this and they're going in the same plane, so I can take them away from each other. 
I'm going to have 18.73 minus 12.44. And I get an answer of 6. Point, so 18.73 minus 12. Point. I get an answer of 6.29 newtons per coulomb, which of course is approximately 6.3 newtons per coulomb. And of course, since this one's bigger, it will be going this way, which is the same direction as we've got here. The resultant force, of course, is going this way because the force is attractive. But this is a negative charge, so it moves in the opposite direction to the field. So the field is going this way, OK, but my force, of course, is going in. So that there is how to find the electric field strength of a radial field. And then to use it to actually work out the resultant electric field strength between two charges. Now, you are more than welcome to try and work out how an imaginary force in the middle, work out the two forces, and then find the field strength exactly how I did at the front. But it's actually quite powerful to be able to work out the field strength of a point between two charges without anything being there in the first place. And that's why field strength is so important, because the field strength equation only depends on the thing that is causing the field. You can work out the force that an object would feel at that point later by just using this formula here. So that there is electric field strength in radial fields.